I sat there a little bit and I tried to side it before it got too late. I jumped down and changed stands. I can still hear them, but I'm a pretty good piece away from them now. We'll see what happens. just barely got sat down and that thing came out. That was a big old deer. It's like it was a big eight point on one side and just had a beam and a brow tine on the other side of the thing. At least a five year old deer. Just a big old bull looking thing. I wish if it I wished I'd have shot him now. just was on the move, kind of, and it wouldn't be still, and I just couldn't make my mind up. I went back and looked at the video, and he's definitely a, what we call a mature deer, five-year-old plus. Well, uh, somebody will get him for it, so if I ain't just got to shoot him. Somebody else can get him. It don't matter to me. But he's probably definitely one of them that needs to be shot. I'm going to look back at the video a little more. Like I said, he wouldn't be still. But I believe he, I'm pretty sure he's at least five years old. Oh. Hey, y'all, not just a super busy morning this morning, but ended up seeing four or five most of them i didn't get on video as y'all can see but uh i went back and studied the uh big deer on a video several times this is exactly what i thought he's gonna be five six years old just got the four on one side like an eight point and a beam and a brow time barely on the other side um either it was damaged you know, I have seen them deer get damaged in the pedicle and uh, grow like that, or it's just a genetic thing. But regardless, we've uh, we've got to take a certain number of deer and like to take the worst bucks out first is what we like to do. So we're going to put that deer on the hit list. I put together just a little short clip that I can send as a text to Brian and them show it to them and this deer's gonna go on the hit list and we'll see if we can take care of it so anyway i'm gonna head back on in probably gonna end up over the speed shop today and see what we can get done see what's going on over there all right i run by the god I still got that smudge on my scratch on my camera i'm trying to get out of it but anyway run by the nissan place and decided to drop my little frontier off and pick up the tight and let them service the other one too but I had a few comments in the past and I guess I've never thought about it or addressed it but I'm on real quick I'm headed over to the speed shop I'm gonna address a comment I forget who it was that asked it but I've talked about managing the books and all that's all I've ever really discussed and a guy commented excuse me forgive me I don't remember who it was but anyway he was asking about how we Oh, shoot our does and all. I have addressed it in one video a little bit, but I go a little bit deeper or whatever this time. Oh, we don't shoot a ton of does anymore. I have to shoot some in the enclosure, but when 
we do have to shoot does, whether it be free range or in the enclosure, the, the fur, if you've been on a deal where you never, this, I'll go back to years ago when we really first started shooting 20, 30 does on a piece of property. Oh, the first thing we would do, I would start with shooting, if you saw does that did not have bones, that'd be number one. I always like to start with the first, I mean the worst, the worst out and then work the other way. So if I saw a doe that had no phones, she would be the first one I'd want to take out. And as far as aging a doe, and I know I talked about this in one of the videos, a, a buck's nose looks like it gets shorter. <clears throat> And a doe's kind of right the opposite. Her nose gets real long. Uh, as far as their body and all, of course, they don't get that full neck and all like a buck, but they will get a full body and not be racehorsey looking, just like a buck when they're young. So when they kind of get that bull looking stage from their chest back, they're getting mature. But it kind of gets to the point to when you've got a lot of deer and got to shoot a lot of does oh you, it's hard to just kind of shoot age because you'll get to where you don't get you don't get to shoot enough and we don't shoot a lot of does anymore i would rather personally concentrate on getting getting the right genetic bucks in there I feel like if you took a mature, say a five-year-old buck out of there that wasn't the type of genetics you wanted, if you shot him, I almost feel like and believe that what he eats could support at least two does, most likely. So that's just my personal thoughts. I, I like a lot of does. I would rather plant more food plots, manage my pine timber, or do more feeding and be able to keep more does. But... You know, you hear people say you don't need to shoot does that have little ones. Well, by the time hunting season starts, oh, even even during bow season, I've raised enough babies, and this is another case where the uh, high fence, I've learned a lot. Oh, once that doe, you see that phone coming out, and it's eating in the wheat or eating at your feeder, and then maybe it goes over there and sucks on its mama, that phone will be absolutely fine if you shoot its mama. I know people have a hard time with that, and I don't necessarily like it, but it's all about managing. It's all we're talking about is managing here. You've still got, there, there'll be no way you get all your does shot if you need to shoot does. If you just shoot does without phones, you're going, now I would, if I saw a doe that had three phones and I had the opportunity to shoot a doe with one phone, that's the one I would take because nine times out of 10, that doe had two, if the nutrition and all was right, she had two phones. So she may not have been as good a mama as the other one. And also too, if you start seeing all your does that's just got one phone, a lot of times that's just, that's mother nature taking care of things and knowing you don't need that many more deer. So, there's a lot of factors that go in there. You know, you either feed them, get, manage your property right, and able to up your carrying capacity on your land and hold more deer. That's what I like to do. And I, I don't mind shooting some does, but boy, it gets old when you try to shoot as many as we used to. We kind of got away from that. Inside the enclosure, you kind of got to. But lots, when you, you got people around you shooting does, and if, if you're really tending to stuff on your piece of property and you shoot all does and everybody else is not, their does is gonna move in. So it's, it's just kind of a merry-go-round almost. I would just rather provide the food and I watch the deer, make sure they're healthy, make sure they have a good bone crop, make sure my bucks are looking good. So that that's more my opinion. I would rather feed as much as I could, manage the properties as much as I could. And it's just not about the uh, food plots. Your winter 
food plots, it's it's about the year-round food, whether it be natural or putting it in a trough for a feeder. That's just my opinion. There's a lot more bucks out there normally that need to be shot than people shoot just to manage right. That's that's what we kind of like to do. The people, the property over in Mississippi that were really trying to hit hard, it's definitely not got the numbers on it that I want where we went this morning. It's got a pretty good age structure on the bucks I've noticed so far because I've, I've been so busy at the Alabama farm fooling with customers and raising deer and all for the last 10, 12 years. I really hadn't had time to study on that, but I'm going down there about every day now to kind of watch it and study it and y'all are seeing on the videos. Uh, we got a lot more carry, carry capacity than we do deer, so we'll kind of manage the bucks along watch the does and if there's a time needed you know if we need to take out 20 30 does we'll do it but we're not there yet and you know with a pine thicket i would much rather be hunting in a hardwood bottom it's just pretty but truth you can you can raise more deer and do your habitat way more better for 365 days a year in a pine thicket Y'all are seeing how we're thinning some of the timber a little harder, getting that daylight to the ground, and I'm gonna be doing some burning. Oh, probably won't start that. I may do a little bit in Alabama, January maybe, oh, but most of it in Mississippi, I'm gonna wait till February. And when that starts growing back, and if I remember when I'm hunting, I'll show you some spots that already in Mississippi that look and are doing providing a lot of food like we want them. so hope i answered the right questions on the doe you know that's a that's a tricky deal we've just about on the free range stuff quit shooting so many does you know if i got one comes in there just right I, it's not gonna hurt to take a few i'll you know i like shooting them with my bow i'd shoot one and training dogs you know and uh, have had a few comments on my dog training videos about don't need to make a bad shot on purpose to uh, just to train a dog. Well, 99% of y'all understand to make something good, sometimes you gotta do stuff and y'all all know that I don't really wanna be tracking a deer. I, I can and will, if, if I want to drop the deer in its tracks, I will. But sometimes you gotta do a few things to, because you know, somebody's gonna shoot one and accidentally make a bad shot, and you're gonna need that dog. It's a lot better to get that done now than lose the deer later. So, I mean, there's, there's some things in life that's not the prettiest thing uh, to get to a good end result. And some people's not willing to do that, and I am. Uh, that's why I've never shown how I train my hog dogs because it wouldn't be good and coon way I used to train coon dogs and all it's kind of the same way it's it's not PETA certified probably so but anyway all right I'm over here at the speed shop we finna do a little something on this race car Uh, we are back on the deck just about got her knocked out maybe getting tight in here Super, super tight.
coming right along. White. All right. We down to one piece in the deck. See if we can get this fuel lid in there without messing it up.
find that. I'll find out you get it on there and make it fit like this. That L. I don't know if it matters. That L goes up under there. Well, let's see. Uh, if it matters. Maybe it don't. Is you ain't got you got it between the metal and that. Was it supposed to be between the metal yeah. or on the very bottom? It's supposed to be between the metal. Oh, between the metal? Alright. I put the other one under it. It may not work either. Oh yeah. That looks a bit more better. on the part you find it. That's what I scratched. I didn't scratch the meat man. It probably won't be the last time. Oh, I got two more rivets if this works. Look at there. Ready for 120 miles. Good day. A little bit of deer hunting this morning. Saw that old call buck about done decided we are gonna put him on the hit list. And uh, just 99.9% .9 finished with the deck on the lake model. That thing gonna look pretty good. We get us a little more color scheme figured out for that white and black and all. I think she's gonna be shot. And now all we gotta do is work on the nose, hood, sides, and spoiler, and she'll be ready to roll. Anyway, I'm about to call it a day. Y'all like our stuff, subscribe to us, Hollis Farms. Hats, t-shirts, and stickers, hollisfarms.com. Appreciate y'all watching. Out of here.